Hey church family, it's Tuesday with Ty. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm, a, I'm a guy that likes movies. I'm a guy that enjoys uh, watching movies, going to the show and, and uh, sitting down with some popcorn, maybe one of my kiddos, maybe a friend or maybe my wife, just going and watching a movie. And uh, it's one of the things I miss since the pandemic has hit is getting to go and watch a movie. And they've started doing this. Uh, this it's kind of a neat thing. It's kind of a weird thing, too, uh, for them to release these brand new movies that should be blockbusters, that should be filling movie theaters with crowds of people waiting to, uh, to watch these movies. They start releasing them at home. And, uh, and so I don't know how I feel about that yet. It was nice getting to watch Godzilla vs. King Kong in my own living room instead of having to go to a movie theater. But I miss that experience of sitting in a movie theater. Um, and as I watched Godzilla vs. Uh, Kong, it was um, it, it reminded me of a lot of what I see in the world today, of, of how people picture spiritual battles. People picture this red guy with horns, this conniving look, this, uh, this, this angry look up against this white Jesus with flowy blondish brown hair and a beard and the white robes and their, their arm wrestling. And I see it on Facebook. It, it makes me roll my eyes every time. Share for Jesus and, and ignore for Satan. Like that's really doing anything. That's, that's not pointed a single person to Jesus. Not, not the real Jesus. Uh, Jesus was a he was a Jew from Palestine. He was he was he was Middle Eastern looking, and so uh, uh, he wouldn't have been this white skinned blonde haired Jesus, anyways. And it just makes me think about the way they view spiritual battles. Uh, it, it made me think about Revelation whenever it talks about Jesus returning and the the final battles, and um, it, it's not much of a battle at all. In Revelation uh, 19, verse 11, it says, I saw a heaven opened up, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True. And righteousness, or in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, or crowns. And he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that it, with it he may strike down the nations. He will rule them with a rod of iron. He treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This, this final battle that comes up between Satan and Jesus is not, it's not much of a battle. Satan and his armies are going to gather. And even now, uh, there's rebellion across our, across our globe, but especially here in the United States. Um, there's an, it's not even a rebellion of, of just we're, we're anti-God. They're, they're so anti-God that they're now saying, uh, you know, we get to pick what gender we are. God can't even assign us our own uh, sex and our own gender instead we are going to pick that we're going to pick the names and we're going to pick this and we're going to it's just spiritual rebellion and they almost look at it like yeah we we get to wrestle with god and it's this arm wrestling picture we see from facebook of satan and jesus arm wrestling for your fate it's not going to be that at all it's going to be it's going to be a very one-sided fight on behalf of our king it says in verse 19 it says, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence, by which he would deceive those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with with their flesh. This doesn't seem like much of the arm wrestling, you know, grappling match that, that Facebook would have us believe, that, that culture today would have us believe. No, 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 no. This is a very, very real spiritual battle that is going to be very quick and very de decisive. Our, our Jesus is going to come back and rule over us. He's going to protect us. He's going to fight battles for us. And Satan doesn't stand any chance. That's why he's doing as much as he can now to keep as many people from Jesus as he can. So it's now, it's it's our work, it's our job, it's our 
task set before us by our King to go and proclaim the gospel, go, go proclaim his grace to as many people as we can now while we're on this earth. Because it's the one thing we won't do after our life is over. We won't proclaim the gospel because we'll be in the midst of the good news. So we have a job to do. There are many people who are lost around us, and I want to advise you to pray for them. I want to advise you to, to care for them and to show grace to them. Because our Jesus, who's going to win this battle, is here to win this for them as well. They just don't know him yet. So we, uh, we want to encourage you guys to go spend time in Scripture this week, knowing that our God is going to fight battles for us. He's going to take care of us, that his grace abounds, that his love and his mercy are his joy towards us. And uh, that our God sings and dances over us. So let us go and be at work for him and his kingdom this week. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, we'll see you later.